My name is Aiden, and I like baseball. Here's the thing, though. I'm actually a huge nerd. So, I decided to combine those two things, and what you're about to see is the product. So, what can it do? Can it sim a game? Well, yeah, it's a baseball sim, what else would it do? Let's make, say, the 2020 Orioles and 2021 Reds play each other. I'll put it into the simulator and it's done. The Reds won 6-4. to four. The Orioles Pat Vileka had a great day at the plate going 3-4 for four with two doubles, but it wasn't enough to take the win from Sonny Gray and the Reds. Okay, but can it sim the entire season? Sure. You can choose any assortment of teams to sim a season, but let's keep it simple and just do all the teams from 2017. I'll put that into the simulator, and the Astros beat the Cubs in 7 to win the World Series. I'm sure that's a completely legitimate and uncontroversial title. Aaron Judge and JD Martinez were the AL and NL MVPs respectively, while Chris Sale and Max Scherzer took home the Cy Youngs. So it can sim a game, sim a season, and keep track of complex stats. Cool. How does it work? Well, each player has a set of stats. Batters and pitchers have three stats that correspond to each other. A batter's contact is compared to a pitcher's stuff, power is compared to movement, and eye is compared to control. Batters also have base running aggression, which is unique to batters. So how do the stats work? Well, before I get into each individual stat, let me ask a quick math question. If a batter hits for a 300 batting average, a pitcher gives up a 280 average, and the league's average is 245, what is the chance the batter gets a hit? Well, to answer that question, I looked to Tom Tango. Tom Tango is a very well-respected baseball analyst and statistician who brought the odds ratio to baseball. The odds ratio has many applications, but it can answer this exact question. The formula looks like that. Okay, that formula is really weird looking and gross, I won't make you look at it, but the answer it gives the answer to the question I presented. The batter would get a hit about 34% of the time. This formula is in basically every calculation that the simulator makes. One more thing to note is the scale I used. Most players' stats fall in the 30 to 120 range, with 75 being average. These numbers are used to find rate stats like batting average. The simulator displays these stats on a 20 to 80 scale, however. I did this because it is a scale that most MLB scouts use to evaluate prospects. Now that the baseline is established, I can talk about the individual stats. Contact, or stuff for pitchers, is found using the player's batting average or hits per at bat. If a player gets a lot of hits, he is seen as having good contact. The formula for finding a player's contact looks like that. If you reverse this formula, you can find batting average from a player's contact. BA is batting average and YC is the year constant, generally between negative 25 and negative 30. Why do we need a year constant? Well, let's compare 2021 and 1921. In 2021, 14 players had a batting average above 300. A century ago, there were 83. Without a year constant, the old players would be better than the new players, which would just be wrong, so I have to adjust contact based on the year. Let's look at some examples of contact. At the top of the dial is Freddie Freeman. The former Atlanta Brave is known for his consistently high batting average, as he has a career 295 mark. In 2021, his expected average taken from baseball savant was 320, which was top to lead. This stat calculates for a league best 105 contact. On the other side of the spectrum is Martin Maldonado. A career 212 hitter, he hit exceptionally poor in 2021, which left him with just a 50 contact. This can be calculated for pitchers too. Jacob deGrom was having a historically good 2021 season before injuries cut it short. He was basically untouchable when he did pitch, however, which gave him an insane 117 stuff. Finally, Dallas Keuchel. He had a really poor season, giving up a 302 expected opponent batted average for 53 stuff. Then there's power. Power comes from home runs per hit. I use that stat mainly because it makes calculating outcomes much easier. The equation looks like that. It's linear like the contact stat, but you might notice there's no year constant. This isn't because home run rates have stayed consistent throughout baseball history. John Carlos Stanton hit 59 home runs to lead the league in 2017. 
The New York Giants as a team led the league in 1917 with just 39. The reason I excluded the year constant is because of the ways baseball has progressed. Throughout baseball history, strikeouts have become more common. This is a result of the pitchers getting better, so the year constant compensates by improving the batter's stats. Home runs have also evidently gone up over time. This is a result of hitters getting better, so the year constant is only in the pitcher's movement formula to compensate. Think about it this way. I have Bryce Harper, 2021 National League MVP, and Babe Ruth, often considered the greatest baseball player of all time. If I took Harper back 100 years to a league where batting averages were really high, it's reasonable to think he could have like a 400 batting average, right? But if I took Babe Ruth to 2021, where home runs are more common than ever, would he hit 80 home runs? No way. So where does everyone fall on this scale? 2021's highest power came from Mike Zunino. The catcher hit 33 home runs out of just 72 total hits. This gave him a very high 121 power. On the other side of the scale is David Fletcher. Fletcher hit just two home runs out of 164 hits, giving him just a 48 power. Then there's I. I is calculated from walk and hit by pitch percent. The formula looks like that. Once again, there's no year constant, but this is because of the rate of walks and hit by pitches has been consistent throughout baseball history. You might ask, why do you include hit by pitches in the formula? The player can't control that. That's like saying someone can be good at getting crapped on by a bird. I have two examples that disprove that. The first is Brandon Geyer. Geyer let his league in hit by pitches twice in a row in 2015 and 2016. That alone would be unlikely enough, but the craziest part is that he only played in about 70% of his team's games in that span. Even in those games, he was often a pinch hitter or a sub, so he got even less opportunities, but it didn't matter. The second is Austin Adams. Adams was a Padres pitcher in 2021 who hit a league-leading 24 batters. That's good for 45th most all-time in a single season. Here's the thing, he was a relief pitcher. He pitched in just 53 innings, or about a quarter of many starting pitchers' workloads. He hit 10% of the batters that he faced. No one to ever hit as many batters in a season has ever pitched in less than 200 innings. For pitchers with less than 100 innings pitched, the second most batters hit goes to Charlie Stetcher, who pitched 15 more innings and hit 10 less batters. Adams is a massive outlier that shows pitchers can be prone to hit by pitches. Anyway, on the I scale, Yasmani Grandal finds himself on the top. He walked an astronomical 23% of the time, which gave him a 144 I stat. Hanser Alberto is on the other side. Alberto is a player known for low strikeouts and walks by making contact with basically everything thrown at him. His batting average was 20 points higher than Grandal's, but he had an OBP 130 points lower. He walked a pitiful 1.6% of the time in 2021, giving him a 41 I stat. Finally, the stealing stat, base running aggression. There's a few things different about this stat from the others. First, it's exclusive to batters. Second, it's scaled differently. The formulas are done with numbers generally from 0 to 100. These numbers are displayed as letter grades with a grading seal that looks like that. Finally, the formula is non-linear. This is because there are many players who basically never steal, many who steal just a handful of times per season, and a few who steal like 50 bags each year. On a linear scale, most players would fall at the bottom with only a few having higher ratings. Because of this, the formula is logarithmic and it looks like that. SA is the percent chance the player will steal given the opportunity. Unfortunately, the number of opportunities is just an estimate because I couldn't find any website that reliably tracks that data. That estimate looks like this. It tracks every time the player gets on and removes extra base hits. Not perfect, but close enough. So I've established that the aggression stat is based off of the chance a player tries to steal. So what is the chance a player actually steals the base? Well, I have a pretty simple formula for this too. It looks like that. Yup, it's just a constant 75%. And you might not buy this. What I basically told you is that the slowest guy and the fastest guy both have the same rate of success when doing something that generally requires speed. How can the slowest guy be just as successful here as the fastest guy? Well... This is Ricky Henderson. He is the greatest base stealer of all time. It's not even close. He has 1,406 stolen bases, which is most all time. He somehow has 50% more stolen bases than the second most. The active stolen base leader isn't even within 1,000. He might be the fastest player to ever play baseball. In 1982, Ricky stole an absurd 130 stolen bases to just 42 times caught stealing. 
That gives us a healthy sample size of Ricky's Prime. Calculated out, that's a success rate of 75.6%, which lines up with my previous assertion. Now this is Albert Pujols. He's had a long career in the bigs, but he's been the slowest player in baseball for years. After multiple injuries to his lower half, his speed dropped to a league bottom 22.4 feet per second according to Baseball Savant. He is grounded into easily the most double plays ever. Surely for his career he'd never reach the same rate of success, right? Oh. These percentages are both well within the margin of error for samples of their sizes. So I showed you an example, but why is this the way it is? My best guess is that it's about surprise. Everyone knew that Ricky was going to try and steal if he ever had the chance, which allowed him to better prepare in case he does. But when Albert Pujols, the literal slowest professional baseball player, tries to steal, no one would ever be expecting it. He catches them off guard. One last time, let's see where some current players fall on the scale. Starling Marte led the league in steals with 47 as he tried to steal in about a third of his opportunities. His aggression stat is 96. The other side is Ty France. He never even attempted to steal all year. Now I should mention that France's stealing stat was calculated with a non-zero number. This is for two reasons. The first is that putting zero into a logarithm gives you an error. Second, if you gave Ty France an infinite number of chances to steal, you'd think he'd eventually try it at least once. That's why I calculate it with a small but non-zero number. We have all the pieces, so let's see the simulator at work. Let's take a random hitter and a random pitcher. The first is 2016 Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin was a solid hitter that year, with a slightly above average contact and a good power and eye. The pitcher is 2016 Ubaldo Jimenez. He was a decent pitcher for the Orioles that year, but he struggled with command at times. Using the odds ratio to find how likely it is that Encarnacion walks here, we get a 15.5% chance. The computer will generate a random number from 1 to 1000, and if it's less than 155, he walks. We get 870 as our random number, so he doesn't walk. This means we have to go to the next step. Edwin now has a 24.5% chance to get a hit. If the check fails, he's out. But if not, we'll go on to the next step. Hey, would you look at that? He got a hit. Step 3. He has about a 22% chance now to hit a home run. If he fails this check, another test will be run to see if he hit a double or not. Otherwise, he hits a home run. Now, before I calculate this last number, some of you baseball fans watching this might remember that Edwin's Blue Jays and Ubaldo's Orioles actually faced each other in the playoffs in 2016. It was the American League wildcard game. And it was a game that ended in pretty dramatic fashion. Even though they've turned a lot of double plays. Oh, there's a drive to deep left field and the ball game is over!